Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another amazing episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This week, we're looking at two of Spider-Man's villains with very similar origin stories, the Scorpion and the Fly. Mac Gargan, the man who would become the Scorpion, first appeared at the end of Amazing Spider-Man number 19 in 1964 as a private investigator tasked with following Peter Parker. The reason for this was explained in the following issue where it's revealed that Gargan was hired by J. Jonah Jameson, the publisher of the Daily Bugle, to find out how Peter was able to catch Spider-Man on film so often. Fortunately, thanks to his handy spider sense, Peter noticed his tail and was able to avoid exposing his secret identity. Jameson, however, devised another job for Gargan. After learning of a scientist named Farley Stillwell, who claimed to have invented a process of causing artificial mutations in animals. Jameson paid both Gargan and Stillwell a large sum of money to attempt to use his experimental technique to create a being even more powerful than Spider-Man. Stillwell reluctantly agreed, needing the money to continue his research, and imbued Mac Gargan with the powers of a scorpion, increasing his strength and coordination several times over. Not only that, but he crafted a robotic tail which he affixed to the back of Gargan's costume, completing his transformation into the Scorpion. Jameson soon set his new weapon after Spider-Man, seeking to eliminate the masked vigilante he staunchly perceived as a menace, and the two superpowered opponents began trading blows. The Scorpion proved to have the edge in strength, as not even Spidey's super-strong webbing could impede Gargan for long. The Scorpion overpowered his younger foe and tossed him into an empty water tower, leaving him for dead. Meanwhile, after further testing in his lab, Farley Stillwell came to the realization that the Scorpion would grow even stronger, and as he did, his evil and savagery would begin to consume him. Sure enough, after defeating Spider-Man, the Scorpion went on a rampage, stealing whatever he wanted and tossing aside any who crossed his path. Stillwell soon found him, however, carrying a formula that would remove his powers and return him to normal. But Gargan refused and began scaling the side of a building. Stillwell attempted to pursue him, but he lost his footing three stories up. In a last-ditch effort, the falling scientist lobbed the antidote, only for it to smash harmlessly on the side of the building, while Farley Stillwell fell to his death. Spider-Man, having recovered, arrived on the scene again, but Gargan battered him aside and decided to go after Jameson and eliminate the one living person who knew his true identity. Spidey, however, proved to be tenacious as he rescued Jameson, adhering the scorpion's feet to the floor with sticky liquid webbing, and, planting his own feet on the floor, ripped the scorpion's tail off of his suit. With his opponent rooted and down an appendage, Spidey was able to deftly dodge the scorpion's powerful blows, striking back and knocking him out, leaving him for Jameson and the police. Of course, Jameson managed to take the credit for the scorpion's defeat, singing his own praises in his own newspaper. As for the human fly, let us jump forward to 1976's Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 10. A criminal named Rick Deacon had kidnapped a girl and an old man for ransom, but the police had him and his men trapped in a building at the waterfront. While the two sides were at a stalemate, Spider-Man was able to slip into the building unnoticed, taking out Deacon's men and rescuing the old man. However, Deacon held the girl at gunpoint and attempted to escape the police cordon. Fortunately, as he exited the building, Spidey was able to pull the girl to safety on a web line. Deacon began to fire wildly at the pair, but before anybody could be hit, the police pelted him with bullets and he fell into the river. Meanwhile, J. Jonah Jameson was concocting yet another plan to defeat Spider-Man. He went to meet with Dr. Harlan Stillwell, the brother of Dr. Farley Stillwell. Whereas Farley inadvertently created a supervillain, J.J. wanted Harlan to create a new hero to outclass Spider-Man. This plan, however, would backfire as well, for when Jameson left Stillwell to prepare, Rick Deacon arrived, barely clinging to life. 
Deacon had overheard the conversation between Jameson and Stilwell, and, holding the scientist at gunpoint, demanded to be used as the subject for the experiment. With little choice in the matter, Harlan Stilwell used his machine to imprint upon the dying man's genetic code that of a housefly, transforming Richard Deacon into the human fly. Stilwell called Jameson, requesting he return to the lab, but by the time he arrived, he found the doctor shot and killed. Jameson panicked and ran, fearful of a potential scandal, but he was caught and captured by the human fly. The fly then traveled to the Daily Bugle and demanded they issue a challenge to Spider-Man on his behalf so that Deacon could have his revenge. Spider-Man, of course, accepted the challenge, battled and defeated the human fly, and rescued Jameson yet again. This time, thanks to Peter's pictures, Jameson was unable to portray himself in a positive light, so he decided not to run the story in the first place. So that's how J. Jonah Jameson was responsible for the creation of not one, but two supervillains. And that's not even counting the Spider Slayers, but that's a story for another time. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe for more marvelous content. As always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below, along with links to my Patreon and Twitter. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!